Hi, I'm Robin Boyce for City Corner. Happy New Year. We've got a lot of great information coming up and we want you to come right on back. And welcome to City Corner. In the studios with me today is a wonderful lady who's all about the money. And that's what I love about her. She's all about making sure you know what's going on with your money. And she is now the manager of Community Economic Partnership, the state of Missouri, which is with the Department of Economic Development, Ms. Vita Jeffrey. Hello, Vita. Hi. How, How are, are you? you? I'm wonderful. Always so good to see you. Yes. How's your daughter doing? My 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 genius journalist. How's she doing? <laughs> She's doing that great. That girl's awesome. She's an awesome writer. I She's hope that she great. chooses that field to continue to be in. She's and everything. very interested. And the paper yeah. is kicking off again pretty soon. So yeah, well, very I'm, good. So I, she's interested. Exactly. In I will let her know. I'll send out my little emails. Let all the kids know. Come on back. We're, we're doing it again. Perfect. But we're here to talk about money smarts. Yes. Tell us a little bit about what's coming up soon. You've got some uh, really good programs programs again mm -hmm. always in trying to help the community learn how to really spend their money correctly save the money correctly tell us more you know we're excited one of the things that we understand is you know, as adults um, all of us wish that we had learned better um, yeah. as children and teens yes. so we could have better habits now so money smart school of finance for children has a number of great things coming up once a year uh, twice a year we do a 10-week session where financial professionals from several of our top financial um, organizations come and they teach children to be stock market savvy. Now, the benefit to this is they meet Saturday mornings for two hours and they actually give children an opportunity to kind of play in the stock market. But leading up to the stock market, you've got to understand budgeting and all the pieces that go along with how money Kids works. Kids get a chance to learn about budgets oh, and stock markets. Oh, my goodness, markets yes, and yes. They get to play with... What the um, dial means. And, yes, okay. yes. And the fun thing about it is they actually practice to where they're tracking their stocks week to week. So at the end, they get to see, had they been live in the market, what they would have really done. Wow. And they earn prizes for doing so. The wonderful thing is just as much as the students participate, oftentimes parents participate as well. Now that's wonderful. They've all, they always ask if they can sit in with their ch children really? for the for So the they want to learn more probably because they didn't learn those sure. things and they want to learn more about what they might want to do with their futures? Absolutely. And, and now is a time where people are finding that it's important for us to understand you know, how it affects us yeah. with our retirement, how it's affecting us in our day-to-day -day lives. And so we get the chance to educate the students, the children, mm -hmm. but we also get a chance to educate the parents who then come and sit in classes for themselves as well. Take us through a, a day and a, a course of the two hours that the young people would get. And so over the 10 week period, mm -hmm. um, they'll have a different topic each day where a financial professional is going to come in and teach them whatever that subject matter is for the day. Um, we do pre-surveys to find out what the students already know. Um, then the lesson might be that day on understanding the symbols or understanding the market or understanding the dollar value um, or how to calculate risk. Mm. Um, there's a big piece mm. on understanding how to calculate risk and how those risks affect you. Um, they are actually, they fill out um, different charts that lead to them being able to pick what the stocks are. You know, and we teach them how to look at where they're spending money every day. What are the, where are you already invested in based on how you'd want to spend your dollar? Okay. So if a child is wearing Nike, then let's get an understanding of how Nike stock works. Now, the cool thing about this program is there's not another program like it that's run the way it's run and offering the sessions that it's offering. And so it's not a cost for the students to come sit 10 weeks, learn about it, finish winning money and prizes. Um, they get money put into um, college um, funds for them so that it doesn't just start, start and stop with them taking a class. Mm -hmm. They come sit uh, for those two hours. They go through, okay, today I'm learning about Nike or how what the, what the symbols are. How do I track it? Where do I go to find out on a day-to-day -day basis what awesome. Nike is doing? Wow. You know, and how do I watch it when I'm not in class? 
so that I can see how it's applicable. So you make it relatable for the students, just mm -hmm. like a math course. Absolutely. Where they get a chance to really understand, like for example, a young person sitting at home at dinner, watching the news with their parents, mm -hmm. and they usually come up with a stock exchange, what happened that day, that baby will be able to point and say, so-and-so and so-and-so is going down, or blah, 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 is going up. Absolutely, and typically it's something that's intimidating for students yes. because... It's intimidating it's, for adults. It's intimidating <laughs> for adults, absolutely, because it's something that we've been so far removed yes. from. Yes. So by bringing it home to having them understand what's in their everyday life, what are they drinking? You know, are they drinking Pepsi products? What are they wearing? Where are they shopping? If they're going to Walmart or Coles or whatever name brand sure. or name stores, how does this apply to a portfolio that they would put together? And then how is it rising or falling as the market changes? You, you all have had a lot of kids come through the courses in the past. I know um, there's a group here that I've had on the program with Money Smart Kids. Mm -hmm. Are we seeing a lot more smarter kids toward money? Are you seeing children that you guys have touched in the past coming back and saying, this you know, is what I'm doing now. I'm going into finance. This is what I'm majoring in. Absolutely. And one of the things that we are doing is the pre and post testing so that we can understand what that level of information was prior to them coming to the class Very and then good. once we finish and then what that follow-up looks like year after year after year. Um, this serves in a number of ways for us. One, having worked in the financial service industry, I understand that it's an industry that needs more individuals. We need yeah. diverse agents. We need people who are interested in knowing that this is a career field that's not only lucrative, that it's needed. And so by exposing these students at this time, they get an understanding of not only is this something I need to know from my own pockets, mm -hmm. it's also something I can look at for a career that I might not have ever even thought of before. Well, you know, I never put, looked at it from their perspective mm -hmm. that a student after going through this might be touched with wanting to become an agent of some corporation mm -hmm. or firm, like a Prudential mm -hmm. or whoever that's out there that sells stocks and, mm -hmm. and does that really well. So through this process, looking at adults, when you talk to adults about what money, how smart they need to be about money, mm -hmm. um, are we really getting there or are we still afraid to really look at what might be going on with our retirements, for example? Um, are we getting better? I, I think that we, we've come into a time where people are having to start paying attention. Because we, we've talked about this personally, yeah. you and I, in the past, and I've gotten it together. Good, good, good. good. <laughs> That's forward. wonderful. I've got it together. Mm -hmm. um, but in the past, I know, for me, Mm -hmm. It was always, oh, you know, I'm, I kept putting off, kept putting off. But then after working in a career like this mm -hmm. and working at so many different radio stations and mm -hmm. television stations mm -hmm. across the country, I never stayed anywhere long enough to even get a pension. Sure. That scared me. Sure. When I turned 50. Sure. And I said, ah, oh, you sure. got to do something different. Sure. My mom always told me way back in my 20s, always put away something every week, right. no matter what your allowance might be, whatever little job you might have, and start putting away towards something. And I did that. Mm -hmm. Now, it, it grew and it went down, grew and it went down, and with, if you're raising kids and trying to put away, mm -hmm. put away. But you have to get to a point where you say, I don't touch that, I don't look at it. Mm -hmm. Is that what you would advise you people really to do? You really do. And Robin, what I appreciate with you is you make it relatable by your willingness to be transparent. It was a mess. <laughs> um, because there are people who take stints in being entrepreneurs. Yes. They take stints at being housewives. They take stints at being in and out of the market, changing jobs, shifting jobs, all of that. So they're not aware of how it's affecting them for the long term. Right. And those are things that we do want to teach to the children, to the parents, so that they can begin to make those connections and get it. So getting them early is the key. Yes. How early can we start well, teaching kids about money? Uh, we need to start teaching kids at kindergarten and first grade. Okay. You know, our, our first grader is learning how the dollar works and all of that because oh, your children. Bad, bad, <laughs> bad <laughs> habits set in early. And it's, easy, it's harder to break a habit than it is to establish a new pattern, and which is why I love Money Smart School of Finance for Children, because if we can teach them now, by the time they're in high school, by the time they're in college, they're making wiser decisions mm -hmm. that they won't still be paying for at 40, 45, 
50 what like people who didn't have access to the exactly, information. Exactly, because it, it is so scary when you're looking at possibly, you know, and I know people who were in their 50s who have already retired, and I don't know how they did it. Mm -hmm. You know, right now, and I sit back and people say, well, when are you going to retire? I said, I can't. Sure. Because I didn't sure. do what I needed to do in my 20s, in my sure. 30s, in my 40s. And I mean, I made great money, but... Sure. I don't have that stuff the way like mm -hmm. I should have done sure. or got into some really good funds or an IRA or really started learning about those things that make a difference in your future. Because mm -hmm. now I've got to look at, you know, the maximum retirement is 68 or whatever. Yes. And um, yes. at this and right now, until our Lord knows what's um, about to change mm -hmm. here, y'all. Okay. But <laughs> anyway, uh, I've got to look at that maximum retirement age. And, and it's fine. I don't have a problem with doing that. My mom and dad, what they, they retired actually in their 70s mm -hmm. and did quite well with their money, which mm -hmm. is what, you know, it's like, well, I wish they would have had a, let us know, sure. boom, boom. But they did all early on, save, save, save. I got one brother in the family. <laughs> <laughs> who did quite well, but mm -hmm. he worked for the IRS, so, that's, <laughs> so that helps, <laughs> you know, but he's doing quite well, and um, um, he has invested his money well, and he did the right things yeah. towards uh, the community and other things that mm -hmm. you can do that help you with reference to tithing sure. uh, and all the other stuff that Absolutely. really balances out the whole money thing. So are those some of the things that you bring to the students when, when you're teaching them as well? Absolutely. The giving and... Absolutely, and, and how to take calculated risk. On January 21st, yes. um, we're also having the opportunity risk for sixth to eighth graders so that they can get a sneak peek of coming in for a two hour session to see what it's like to take calculated risk and then financially and then what that payoff looks like. Does it look like they expected it to or there's mm. some things that they didn't expect to that happened that they have to um, make shifts for. And so that's even an event where they can come out. Um, it sounds like a project that I was working fine. on in my MBA. Yeah. I mean, you know, really this makes total sense and I'm so glad you all have gotten together and are doing, doing that. Give us all the information uh, when this takes place. So the opportunity risk is taking place at William J. Harrison Center okay. on January 21st. Mm -hmm. That's part of um, dealing with the Martin Luther King celebrations throughout awesome. the month. Um, Money Smart School of Finance Stock uh, Market Savvy Kids kicks off February 4th and right now registration is going on. They can go to our website um, and That's register. That's a 10-week course. That's the 10-week course. It starts Saturday, uh, February 4th for 10 weeks from 10 to 12 on Saturdays. Um, scholarships are available for that. Taking place and where? At the William J. Harrison Center. It's all, everything is going to St. Louis Community everything College at, at William at, J. Harrison Center right. at Just Cast East, at no, Grand. That's right. And mm -hmm. then lastly, we're doing Money uh, Monopoly Mania in oh. July, and we're doing tickets for it already. And we have a lot of fun um, having Monopoly playoffs for kids. Um, where people, where organizations are able to personalize their own board this and just fun. come out and bring the community and bring wow, families Nina. together for all of I that. I got to bring so. you back because I, I just love talking with you about mm -hmm. what you all are doing in the community with reference to our babies and really mm -hmm. educate them. Thank you so much for thank coming Thank you in. for having me. I really appreciate yeah. it. And guys, I really thank you so much for tuning in to what we were talking about here. But first, we'll be back with The Dark Secret here in St. Louis. <laughs> Hi, my name's CJ. A few years ago, my father became seriously ill. I did what I could do before he passed, but it took its toll. I lost my job, my house. I'm getting back on my feet, but I don't know when there'll be food on the table. How'd I do, CJ? We could be twins. Well, cousins, maybe. <laughs> Play a role in ending hunger. Visit feedingamerica.org slash hunger and find your local food bank. If you drive buzzed, it could cost you around $10,000. You'll face major legal fees, major fines, and steep insurance penalties. You could lose everything. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving. Because buzz driving is drunk driving.
Hi there, I'm Robin Boyce for City Corner. Welcome back, and in the studios with me is a young man that I heard on the air about a year ago when he first got here to St. Louis, and he was all this big deal about the dark secret is coming. And when he opened that mic, I said, oh my God, <laughs> <laughs> you sound really great. This is Osei, the dark secret. What's How going are on, you? I'm blessed. How you doing? I'm, I'm fantastic. I'm fantastic. Thank you, 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 you flew in here from, from where? where what well, direction did you come from? from Atlanta. From Atlanta, Atlanta Georgia. My way of D.C. Um, so I've had a number of stops, but Atlanta we, was We home. all do, right? Yeah, it, absolutely. We stop at these yeah. different uh, radio stations or mm -hmm. TV stations wherever we work across the country. But yeah. you, or I, I met you actually um, maybe a, a, that year or so ago yeah. at the um, Sister Strut. Sister Strut. I was out there yeah. signing up at the Macy's I remember, store, yeah. and I, you were sitting there, you know, <laughs> waiting and hollering at people, and you hadn't been here maybe a week or so. Yeah. And I said, brother, I'm so glad you're here. I wanted the I old folks it. from the old KMJ and yeah. Magic days. Yes. And uh, you were so gracious. I said, well, wow. You welcomed me. I appreciate that. A nice, that. warm handshake <laughs> the brother had. That's what you do, young people. Yeah. And you speak well, yeah. and you just have the diction. Thank I you. just, I just so appreciated when our announcers are on the air mm -hmm. speaking well and not kicking verbs and, and <laughs> you know, and pronouns and yeah. everything to the curb. I, I can't stand it. Yeah. But I am so uh, happy that you're here and that I'm you really are the kind of, of uh, air personality or what they call back in the day DJs. Who wants to get involved in this community? And, 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 but before we get into that, tell us a little bit about your background. Where are you from? Um, so originally I was born actually outside of, uh, well, in a small place called Kitchener, Ontario. Uh, so I was born in Canada, lived in Ghana until I was about five and then came back to the U.S. Really? You were born in Canada and you went back to, to the... I went to Ghana. Your My parents, parents were students. Are Ghanaians? Yeah, they're Ghanaian. Really? Yeah, so, okay. Uh, I'm Ghanaian. Um, I always like to, you know, represent that. Even though early on it was a bit of a culture shock and I was trying my hardest to be super American. I am How Ghanaian. was it a culture shock for you? Um, just being first generation in this country and I think just understanding that but also being a big... Um, from a historical perspective, like I was really big into the American um, black black history here in the U.S. So I feel like I'm, uh, I epitomize kind of bridging the gap and mm -hmm. understanding, you know, culture, hip hop, uh, the music, Afrobeat. What you got know, you everything. into this business? You know what? I wanted to do it since I was, you know, since I was, uh, you know, young. I, I ended up interning for Donnie Simpson. Did you? And they got an really? opportunity. Yeah. So that was kind of watching him. You know, growing up and seeing what BET was, Video Soul, yes. that really gave me a lot of inspiration. That was a hot show for him Crazy. for years. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he's still on the air, correct? Yeah, actually, I know he's back. You know, okay, on, yeah, because I saw on, him, on TV uh, something well. a write up for yeah. him. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, just having an opportunity to be in the presence of some greats like mm -hmm. himself and really just learn. Um, I always wanted to do it, but I was a little uncertain about really telling that to my parents because it was a very non-traditional did they have something else in mind for you um i don't think career? you know my, my parents did so i'm just you know what? <laughs> i would say i would say you know my family outside of my father my father's a physician uh my mother's a social worker my stepmother's a, a nurse so mm -hmm. i come from a, a family i think of, of service providers mm -hmm. or people who give medical professionals medical, yeah mm -hmm. and, and and just an understanding of you know uh Coming from West Africa, I think that there's just more traditional career paths that people tend to think of. Mm -hmm. And going into media, radio wasn't necessarily one of those, but I saw an opportunity to really carve out a different lane and do some things that weren't, you know, really in that space. So I feel like, you no, know, there's a generation of individuals I definitely think I can relate to on multiple levels and just from a cultural standpoint, but really it's bridging the gap on culture and letting folks know we're really all the same. I mean, you know, our differences we need to celebrate, but there's so many things that bind us and uh, we gotta, you know, acknowledge that as well. How do you like St. Louis? I love St. Louis, man. The people have been very welcoming. They're hard. They, you know, they're nothing to play with now. They're gonna let you know how they feel. Uh, <laughs> when they, especially when they see you in the streets, you know, they- Really? I heard you say this and, you know, I can, I can appreciate that because, you know, it's a little bit different. Um, just, I think every city's got its own yeah. character, its own, you know, what makes it what it is. But St. Louis, this is a, a, a serious city with some history, a lot yeah. of history, a lot of musical history. And I'm a big fan of music as well, and that's why I'm in it. So I feel like being in St. Louis, there's something here. 
Mm -hmm. And um, I think that, you know, the rest of the world is going to understand it as well in a bit now, of a different way. Uh, primarily the format that, you, that you're on is hip-hop and R&B. Yeah, hip-hop and R&B. But um, you are interested in getting that audience, which is generally that demographic is 18 to 35, sure. four, and you want that audience to become informed yeah, about the issues that are going absolutely. on, not only in this community, but around the world. Sure, so you are doing some things on your show. Mm -hmm. uh, you have somebody, have some women on once a week or a business yes. show? Yes, what do you we doing? do a segment called called Working Women's Wednesday, where we like to just highlight um, women who are doing their thing in our communities. I think that, you know, we need to celebrate that. We need to acknowledge them. And certainly they're the backbone of a lot of our families and helping to, you know, provide that, that foundation. So, I mean, uh, in, in going out and working and also maintaining families and, you know, and other responsibilities that come in life, I think that we need to acknowledge them. And so we try to do that. So if there are any women out there, certainly that are entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. we want to know about you. Mm -hmm. We want to give you a platform to speak to the people. To Very connect. good. You're on the air from what time to what time? In, uh, uh, 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. Monday okay. through Saturday. Afternoon drive. Yes, afternoon drive. Afternoon drive. And so you're on the air and, and you just, are you, are you just having fun with the folks yeah. who are calling in and Absolutely. talking to you and everything? Yeah, we talk about whatever Whatever's current, whatever's relevant, I mean, obviously, uh, you know, right now we're just going through a major transition in this country. We're getting ready to, you know, enter into another administration. And, you know, it's been a bit of a sensitive time, I would certainly say, particularly over the last, you know, year and couple of years or two and a half years, see, say, in St. Louis. But, you yeah. know, it's really about acknowledging the things that are taking place. And coming to St. Louis, I had a chance to kind of observe it from the Mike Brown perspective. When now I was you away from you him. came in on the cusp of the end of the whole Mike Brown. A year later. The, yeah, yeah, that's year, what I, I yep. thought. Yeah. Okay. So it's been about two and a half years now, but mm -hmm. you know, I, I like everybody else watched it on television. Okay. It was like, wow, you know, this is unbelievable. So St. Louis is a part of the international conversation. Oh, St. Louis is part of the patchwork of this yes, country. Absolutely. That most definitely, it always has been. But I think after that incident Certainly. and and others, other things that have happened here in the city. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it has really uh, faced itself as a city that is a force to be reckoned with. Yeah. And, it's, and it's going to move forward in a really good positive manner because so many good things are going to come out of that unfortunate I situation. The president spoke, Yes. had a farewell speech. What did you think about that? Man. Um, president Obama. President Obama, I think, has done a lot of things for everybody in this country, but for me as a person of color, I think one of the things that he really just exemplified is the strength of the black family. I love how he celebrated Michelle Obama, how he acknowledged her as taking on a role that she didn't necessarily sign she up for. She did not want it. <laughs> but she's such a graceful, I yes. mean, they just epitomize so much and I think they give everybody a sense of hope across the board. But I think um, for us as people of color, having that be the first time we had somebody in such a a significant and powerful role the way he's handled himself has been exemplary so I really mm -hmm. you know commend him and you know I'm inspired and I feel like you know we're getting ready to see a new wave of individuals who are going to rise up to it you know an even higher level. Mm -hmm. He uh, in fact in his speech asked that young people like yourselves mm -hmm. and, and others who were part of that campaign when he mm -hmm. ran in uh, 2008 and in 2012 pick it back up. Do you think he's going to be the kind of president that uh, does not go home and sit on a ranch or in mm -hmm. South Chicago <laughs> in his case, yeah. but is he going to be the kind of ex-president that are president? Because they really don't call him ex-president, you call him president. Is he going to be one of those kind of presidents that leaves office that will be an activist? Oh, absolutely. I, I mean, in my heart, that's what I feel. He's that's young enough to still, you know. Yeah, I mean, you know, they just grade him out through this, these two terms, but nonetheless, he is I think, I think some of his greatest work is yet to be seen. I think mm -hmm. his influence on the global scale will be understood and appreciated, his diplomacy and his push for, you know, what I consider to just be equality across the board for, for everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure the presidency is a very, it's a difficult task and, you know, for anybody and certainly for, for President Obama, but the fact that he's even going back to Chicago, a city that probably really needs his yeah. leadership, his influence, and, you know, I just think the energy that they bring, um, you know, as a family into that city, you know, he's going back to where it started. And I can really appreciate him always, always uh, putting that out there at the forefront. Mm -hmm. So I think some of the greatest things we're going to see from that man are going to come post-presidency. 
coming uh, from the outside, and I can say that because I'm mm -hmm. an outsider in certain situations sure. in my career mm -hmm. that I would never thought I'd be, I'd be doing right now for a living, and it, I'm, I'm an outsider. Mm -hmm. But and, and then I have some assessments of what I see mm -hmm. when I get into those situations. You come from uh, other parts of the country. You've mm -hmm. worked in other areas. Worked on the East Coast as well. Um, uh, how does uh, St. Louis stack up when it comes to um, really bringing things together? And I, I'm talking about, yeah, with well, the region too. I'd, I'd have to say that because we just had a big um, race <clears throat> here and um, things have changed from Jefferson City on down. Yeah. And things are about to change with this new mayoral race that's happening for March 7th. Sure. Um, how do you see things happening here in St. Louis compared to other places you, you probably have worked? I think, I think, you know, St. Louis is on its way to um, really stepping into a new space. I think it's going to be, you know, technologically driven. Um, I think the currency in St. Louis before historically was industrious, but, you know, mm -hmm. now we're moving into technology. Yes. And I think that there's an opportunity. I think, you know, everybody can't go to Atlanta. Everybody can't go to Washington, D.C. I'm telling D. you, wow. So you some know? of these entrepreneurs are going to need to come yeah. to cities like St. Louis, mm -hmm. Detroit. Mm -hmm. And I think that there's a... Uh, a boom taking place in the Midwest, and I think St. Louis is a major part of it. So, mm -hmm. for those of us that really, you know, tap into that source and you know become involved in the conversation, I think we can really be a part of, of ushering in that change and being a part of a new wave economically as well. So, I think there's some opportunity. And and and, and do do people need to figure out how to jump on in there and just do it? I think so. I mean, I would certainly say, uh, particularly for instead you know, of sitting back saying, "Well, y'all not let me in," right? You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I think you gotta. You know, they say you change the way you look at things and the things you look at change. And I think that, you know, we've got to get into, particularly for people of color, the, the technological revolution that's taking place mm -hmm. and get trained in those, you know, in those uh, uh, fields so mm -hmm. that we can be contributors. And I think you, you said it now, get trained. Yeah. It, it, it's really important for folks. It doesn't mean you have to go get a four-year degree, a sure. BA, a, a MBA or whatever. But there's opportunities and situations that are set up with the community college district. Yeah which are really much more economically to attend, that people can go and get certain kinds of training, IT per people or an accountant, which I tell my students all the time, those are the fields, yeah. accounting, IT. Yeah. If you learn how to count somebody's money, <laughs> do budgets, you in there, right. okay? If you know how to fix a computer or whatever the programming is Absolutely. or coding, you got a job Absolutely. out here. I mean, it's, and th it's yeah. there. I mean, there are more jobs that are popping up in St. Louis right now. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know, but if I weren't employed, I'd have something. something. You know, something yeah. to do out here. I really appreciate you coming in I here and you. talking thank with you so us much about for this. Me. This is really good. You yes. are you are on the air thank again. You. Tell tell us. Oh, we're 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, you know, this Monday through Saturday. This is KMJM 100.3 The Beat, the beat. Yep. Yep. and iHeartRadio, and people can radio. reach out to you. We yeah, got your page me. up. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, what do they need to follow uh, you? At uh, Oh Say the Dark Secret. You know, oh, at oh Say the, the Dark Secret. African Darkness on Twitter. I love it. <laughs> I'm so happy that you're here. Thank you. And that you've given us an opportunity to get to know you. Thank you for Thank having you so me. Much. Appreciate All right. you guys. Yeah. Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in to City Corner. We will see you the next time. I'm Robin Boyce.